Welcome back to Painting Trafalgar. This is going to be episode like 11, I think. It might be, a, it might be episode 10. I, the last couple episodes had good and bad, I think. If you watched them, you might know. Uh, the last one, I, I, I still don't know where the microphone is located, and I'll occasionally put my hand over it on the camera I'm using. Anyway, I'm back at the computer. Um, this is a zoomed-in area of the larger photograph. That's the photo. Um, I've been altering it to suit my purposes. Here's the other photo that's very similar, but just a tiny bit different. Look at the location of the schooner, and then look at the HMS Victory behind her. Right, And then when I show you the other picture, you'll see that I've altered the image. Uh, they're not in the same spot in between the two masts. This one has been moved closer. And I've, I've cut and pasted the schooner over top of the Victory. So there's a different HMS Victory visible between the sails than the Victory that's actually there. Because this is a part that was cut out like a patch. I just shifted it over a little bit. So on the painting, there's the the schooner, HMS Victory, and prior to my alteration, the schooner was over here just a little bit. But it was one of those things where I just, like when I saw the image um, in a smaller form, I liked it, but then when I zoomed in on a larger version of it, I thought that the composition would be better if I moved the schooner over. Um, this is from that photograph, right? I've blown it up. This is 24 by 30 inches canvas. It's the biggest one you've seen me paint. And in the foreground is the photograph of my 74-gun ship. And just before I decided to shoot this, I was putting these little white marks. And what they are, um, these little squares, are the gun ports on the, the port bow. This is the, the forward part of the ship, the front end of the ship. It's sailing this way. Um, and the side of the ship is very dark, as you can see in the photograph. It's can't even really see details in it. So in this version of Photoshop, I lightened that whole area. You can see there's a, a rectangle of lightness, and I artificially lightened it just so I could pick out the details better here. And then these um, vertical bars, I can move around. See that? And the same with the horizontal bars. They're just called guides in Photoshop. And let's say I want to define exactly where this corner is, right? I can move the vertical bar over here so it falls on that corner, and the horizontal bar so it falls in that corner. And over on the side, over here, I can read off the scale. So this scale is in centimeters. So what does it say? That's about 45 and change. Um, and I have a... Uh, a T-square, which I place on the actual canvas, right? Here's my T-square. I hang it off the top of the canvas, and I measure off exactly where this is. And you'll notice, uh, you might think this is funny. This is a weird observation I found. I had to tape a ruler that had centimeters onto what would be the right-hand side of the T-square as it hangs vertical, because I found it impossible to find a T-square with centimeters on the top half of this. And the reason it makes it's important that it be on the top half is because when I go this way with it, I'm holding it up with one hand, blocking the lower numbers, trying to find the verticals. And it's funny that maybe in Europe you can get a T-square that has just centimeters, but in the United States, the best you can do is get inches on this side and centimeters on the other. So I had to actually tape a ruler <laughs> onto my T-square. So if you're listening, big T-square industry, um, please rectify that. And then I have like a cheaper plastic one that I got um, for pennies, basically, off the internet. I got two of them. And this is for one, the giant one is unwieldy, but I can actually read these numbers a little better. Um, so this is what I call transcribing. I'm transcribing the image directly. So every point, like for instance, this corner, the uppermost corner of the sail, and this corner, the lowermost corner of the sail, has been triangulated in that same way off of the photograph. And I can zoom in where it's located, and I can move the little guides into position. Can you see that? I'm not sure if you can see that in this light. 
and reading off the top of the scale and off of the bottom here and over here. I get the numbers. I put it on here and I make a notation. And I do it with thinned white or black paint. Um, I just thin the paint a little bit and I draw on it as if it was like chalk. So this is going to get covered up later. I'm making a distinction between drawing and painting. What I'm doing here is not painting. I am making a line on a plane and I'm not trying to feather it and make it uh, chiaroscuro or sfumato or any of those things. It's just a white line. It's just the mathematical points. You can actually see where I plotted the points, right? Here's a vertical line and here's the points that I plotted. Here's the vertical line. Here's the points that I plotted. And it's, it's hard to get this curve just right. I'm assuming that I got the curve right on the model. And then in the photograph, the curve is represented in space. But to freehand draw this curve and to hit all these points exactly as they are in the photograph is a challenge. You can do it freehand, um, but it, it really requires you to have a very comprehensive knowledge of everything going on on the ship. Because on the actual ship, this railing isn't even flat in the up and down dimension. Like on the, in the horizontal dimension, it's curving up a little bit and it's curving inward a little bit. There's very little on a ship that's actually straight. Like even this piece of timber here, the whole deck has a camber to it. There's a peak at the center. The center of the deck is higher than either side. The water would run off that way. Um, so people who are um, carpenters that work on ships are um, shipwrights. They're not carpenters. They're shipwrights. Um, and their ability to build ships goes way beyond that. nothing against carpenters you know there it's a skilled trade and it's you know it's much more difficult than anybody gives them credit for doing but they're almost always dealing with 90 degree angles whereas on a ship you're almost never almost never dealing with 90 degree angles or if you are it's 90 degrees in one plane but it's off a little bit in the other because the whole ship from stem to stern from the front end to the back curves and everything in between the two points where they join together are not joining at a 90 degree angle, they're joining at that weird angle. And that's kind of a little bit of the, what I'm dealing with here. The gun ports are thicker on the bottom um, because the, the curve of the hull is, is uh, curving outward as it comes around the bow. So these, these are square holes if you look at them straight on but from the side they all curve a little bit so that's a factor in the uh, the painting and it's the it's what happens at the early stages of any of my paintings like if i was out in uh, daylight painting on the street i wouldn't be working from a photograph but i would essentially be doing the same thing where i'm uh, holding a brush in front let's say i'm going to paint uh, the uh, the tiger right i hold my arm at arm's length, you know, let me put, so you can see what I'm doing with my, there's an imaginary point, there's a real point at the tip of the brush, right? And then I can move the tip of my thumbnail back and forth. And so if I place the end of the brush here at the end of the sail, and I place my thumbnail here, right? At the other end of the, the, the sail, um, I can, I now have that measurement, which is the distance between here and here. And I could transpose this somewhere else. If I wanted to paint an identical one on a different canvas, I can do that. So what I do with my eye when I'm out there painting in the street, I hold my arm out at arm's length, and I measure. Here, I'm going to do the bottle. I measure how wide the bottle is with my thumb. And then um, I have to have my arm extended fully, because if I move my arm in and out a little bit, you can see the measurement's no longer valid. Now the measurement doesn't match if my hand is moved towards the camera a little bit. So you hold your arm out. And this this is what that stereotype, in the old days you'd see cartoons and the artist is going like this with his thumb. And uh, that's what that is. That he's looking at his thumb, or she, and then comparing his thumb to the canvas. So if I was going to paint this scene, which I have, um, it starts the same way. I have to lay out the drawing first. It's not a painting. Uh, in the drawing, I'm trying to determine the distance between this point and this point and reproduce it on the canvas or on the paper. And likewise, I'm going from this point to this point. Can you see the difference? I'm not sure on the video. 
Um, so th there's a relationship of the space between here and here and the relationship between here and here. You could write a formula that, that describes that this is a certain percent bigger than that. And to be consistent um, with a formula would work everywhere. Um, you have to be consistent with your measuring. So this, I didn't ex intend this to be a, a video about measuring, but that's what it turned into. It's a video about the beginning of a, of a painting. This painting, you saw where it went from uh, the models um, being photographed, and now I'm blocking it in. I This is like the third day of painting, and I'm still working on the drawing, but I filled in a lot of the paint too, because I, I don't want to have a sharp point where up until that point I'm drawing and after that point I'm painting, I will blend seamlessly from drawing into painting. Um, the danger is to get too far out in front with a painting before the drawing catches up, and that's why this morning I started working on this area, because I hadn't addressed it. I started painting all of this, um, getting excited about the, the meat and potatoes of the whole painting. You know, this is the part, the chewy part, that people are going to really digest and the flavor, right? This is on the edge of the plate. It's not it's literally not as important. Um, but if I get it wrong, the the sailing ship in the foreground becomes less believable. If I get this line here a little off, right? Um, it's telling a part of your brain, not even consciously, that I've got one of those proportions wrong. That there's a I violated the rule that the painting itself is pretending to be following. Um, that rule about proportion. You know, if, a, if this is this, and there's a formula that you can get from that to that. And if I don't get that line right, I am, uh, I'm, I'm not being precise enough, basically, is what it is. You can say that it's an art and not a science. That phrase, put it in quotation mark, it's an art, not a science. Meaning that you can have wiggle room and windage and leeway. Uh, leeway, nautical term. Huh? Um, but also, if you're going to do realism and want recognizable objects, and you're trying to be realistic with a capital R. You should be trying to define the shapes that exist in the real world as accurately as you can on the... You know, there are some rules about laying out the drawing. And, uh, you you know, the viol I keep using the word violating the rules, but what it really means is, like, it's the lack of skill to do it better. You're trying to get to this perfection where there's a tiny point on this line between here and here that's not, you know, it's, it's, it's higher than this one and lower than this one. And you could measure it to, you know, down to the point of angstroms. You could really go that, that far into it. And th there would only be one precise location. And drawing from life or, or, you know, even from a photograph, reproducing it by eye and then making a mark with your hand is more about geometry and science than it is about art. Um, but it's on that same, um, uh, what's the word I always use? There's a, there's a spectrum of scientific precision on this side to pure artistic throw paint at the wall on that side, where it's uh, you know, the, the impulse and the, the freshness of, of the, the practiced indifference to precision that has the, air quotes, artistic um coat that it wears <laughs> i'm throwing some weird metaphors in there whereas the clinical precision at the at the other end of the scale um it's it's still on the same spectrum as drawing and, and, and painting and creating art and it has just as valid a place as the spontaneity of a jackson pollock splash of color um it's just a different tool in the toolbox I think I've said enough. It's like almost 15 minutes. What I intend to do with this painting today is just like more of the drawing. I'm going to be, you know, I might not even wind up mixing many of these colors that I laid out because I'm probably just going to be using a lot of the white and mixing a lot of grays and getting um, all this laid out and the, the standing rigging. Um, I think I'll do a, an episode on rigging one day, but the standing rigging is this stuff, These these lines that are radiating down from the mastheads there those lines don't move anywhere and they're not intended to they're preventing the mast from falling over so they're going to be an important compositional aspect of the, the painting they're literally like lines in space and uh, once i put them in there i'm hoping i'm going to feel 
happier about this painting because right now I'm not happy with this painting right now. I guess that's my confession. It's I've I, I reached a, a point here. I'm going to do another um, spectrum. Up here is tremendous enthusiasm. Right and down here is I don't believe it's going to work. I start with a photograph and I look at the photos and I like them. I alternate the photographs a little bit and I go you know enthusiasm enthusiasm. I start the painting and I look at what I have and the enthusiasm lowers again because. I have this mental image of what used to be up here and then I can't match it yet because I haven't it's not a painting yet it's more of a drawing it's more of a schematic um, and without all the elements in place for instance those lines I can't really judge it fairly like I'll know if this painting is a stinker once I get all the drawing in there <laughs> I'm a little nervous because right now my confidence is lower but like it was even lower before I finished the work the last time in this. When I added the color and added the wake here and the blue, felt like I was painting and not drawing. That was a, a you know a boost, a shot in the arm. It made me feel better about the painting because it was you know I know it's going to look. <laughs> worst comes to worst, I can saw this part of the canvas out and, and stretch that, and I'll have a nice little painting, right? But I'm hoping I'm going to have this bit you know more complex, more ambitious uh, painting that's going to look good. Uh, the photos look good, I think. Getting the painting to look good and be believable is going to be a challenge. But I, I like the idea that like I'll have this whole um, very theatrical stage of, of the deck of the ship on which I can place human figures. What are they going to be doing? The, you know, the, anybody looking at the painting will look at those guys because they're being presented right in front, right in the foreground. And they're going to go zoom in with their eyes and wonder what those guys are doing. So I've got opportunities to have like the captain over here or the first mate with a telescope. You know, I can have guys over here swabbing the deck. I can have, you know, activities. And certainly I can have guys up in the rigging again. So that, I'm, I'm hoping all those elements will make this a, a, a painting that you can, you can pause in front of and study for a while. And then hopefully you'll like it, right? That's 17 minutes, and I'm going to call it over at this point. Thanks again, and tune in next time for Painting Trafalgar.